Hello, Riley Creek friends. Sorry to have missed you on Sunday. So here I'm going to share with you our scripture and our sermon from Sunday. Scripture is coming to us first from Philippians 2. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider yourselves, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look out not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name. At that name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And then a reading from Mark 9. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? They kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last, the servant of all. And then our last reading coming to us from Mark 10. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You do not know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you drink the cup I drink and be baptized. You will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with what I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. But not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must become your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom for many. This is the word of God. It is absolutely true and given to us in love. Thanks be to God. The Little River Church was just down the street from First Memorial Church. And since they were located on the very same street in the same town, the two youth groups were often competing with one another. They participated in the same sports leagues and they had become intense rivals. Little River Church was always trying to outdo First Memorial and vice versa. One Sunday, following Bible study on serving others, the youth group at Little River Church decided to go out into their community and put their faith into action. The youth pastor organized the kids into ministry teams and challenged them to go out and serve others. They could do anything, but they needed to remember to do what Jesus would do. So the youth group from the Little River Church went out into the neighborhood and started serving. One group washed cars, another group went and pumped gas for free, another group went to the nursing home, and another group sang songs to the shut-ins. After their time was up, the ministry teams returned to the church and reported what they had done. Each group had stories to tell as they shared what they learned and how it made them feel. One of the groups told of how they had gone to serve a woman who lived next to First Memorial Church. When First Memorial, their rival, was mentioned, everyone in the group groaned. We mowed her grass, we raked leaves, and we did yard work for her, and one of the students said she was really nice. Afterwards, we were invited in, and she prayed for us. And then she said this, 
You young people from First Memorial Church are always doing such nice things for us older folks. Oh no, said the youth pastor. She thought you were from First Memorial? That's terrible. Well, I hope that you set her straight and told her that you weren't from First Memorial, but from Little River Church. Well, no, we didn't, said the student, surprised by the youth pastor's question. You told us to do what Jesus would do, didn't you? We decided that Jesus would keep his mouth shut. This is today's first lesson on humility. Humility involves serving. And when we serve, we should not be concerned with getting the credit for it, but with glorifying God. Scripture says it this way, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 1, 31. The object of service is not to make ourselves look good, but to point others to God. Therefore, humility first looks like pointing to God. Our second story comes to us from scripture, this incredible encounter that we just heard from Mark 10. By this time in the gospel of Mark, Jesus has detailed his own death three times to his disciples down to the details of being spit on and mocked. Three times the disciples have heard that he will die and the details of his death. Yet here we are, James and John, like petulant children, ask what every parent knows is a trap. Promise me you'll do whatever I ask. And of course, Jesus doesn't fall for the trap, but says, what do you want me to do for you? Which I think is an awesome question. Jesus' question shows us and them that he has a great desire to serve, right? It is, in fact, his purpose. But then the incredulous request comes. We want the highest places of honor and glory in your kingdom, please. We want to be seen as important, so we need to be at your right and at your left. Jesus kindly says, you have no idea what you're asking. Can you go through what is about to happen to me? Remember, they heard it three times, spitting, mocking, torture, and death. To which James and John say, sure, why not? Jesus replies, actually, you will drink the cup I drink. But as to those places of honor, they, there are other arrangements for that. Enter the other ten disciples who hear of this exchange, and they are beyond mad. They are raging. Perhaps because they wanted those exact places of honor and they had not asked yet. Jesus, though, finds this moment with James and John acting as spoiled children and his other disciples in a rage, this moment to teach. And he essentially says this, you will not be people who throw your weight around. You will not be people who let power go to your heads. If you want greatness, you will serve. And then Jesus says, why do I know? Because that is what I am here doing. I came to serve, not to be served. I came to give my life away in exchange for those trapped in sin. He's basically saying to be great, you must follow me. Now, many truths are detailed here in this section of scripture but as far as humility goes, we learn that humility starts at the bottom. You have heard the kingdom of God referred to as the upside down kingdom because it is unlike the world. The world says that winning and owning and having and consuming and being served is the high point of life. But God's kingdom says, as Benedict of Nursia describes, we descend by exaltation and we ascend by humility. The goals of the spiritual life are just plain different from the goals we are taught from the world around us. Our next story is about a man who lived the majority of his life as a drunk homeless man on the streets. Prior to his conversion, Joe's miserable existence was well known by those at the local mission. He seemed hopeless. But amazingly, he was converted and following his conversion, everything changed. Joe was the most caring person at the mission. He spent all his time there doing anything that needed done. 
Nothing was too lowly or beneath him. He cleaned restrooms, cleaned up after the sick and drunken visitors, and he did all of it with gratitude and a smile. Everyone could count on Joe. He especially took care of the feeble men wandering in, unable to get into their beds and care for themselves. One evening, the director of the mission was delivering an evangelistic message to the crowd of still and sullen men. One man came down the aisle and he knelt to pray and he cried out for God to help him change. The repentant man over and over said this to God. Make me like Joe. Make me like Joe. Make me like Joe. Make me like Joe. The director of the mission leaned over and said, son, I think you mean make me like Jesus. The man looked up at the director with a quizzical expression and asked, is he like Joe? Humility and love are sermons that we preach with our lives without even realizing it. The first communication that others see about us comes through our regular daily actions at school and at work and even at home. Our lives point to Christ more than any sermon ever could. The other big piece of Joe's story and the youth group story and Jesus's story is about attending to the needs of others. Humility always looks like promoting God and others above self. This last story, I won't go into detail because likely you know it. It is the story of Joseph. Remember how badly he was treated by his brothers? Of course, he wasn't super nice to his brothers either, but his brothers treated him even more badly, plotting to kill and then selling him into slavery. He was falsely accused of interest in Potiphar's wife, sentenced to prison, languishing there for over two years. He was lonely and likely confused. But at the proper time, God exalted him. If you remember, even in prison, as he became um, a guard over, our, you know, over all of the rest, even though he was still a prisoner. But Joseph eventually becomes second in command to the Pharaoh, right? And we hear of his brothers coming to him in fear and terror. And when they learn he is their brother, certainly their minds must realize the power and the revenge that Joseph could do to them the ter terrible things that he could do. But what does Joseph do? He treats them kindly, right? He forgives them. He gives them safety and provision. And later we hear this from Joseph, Genesis 50, 20. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Humility allows us to receive from God blessings that self-serving schemes can never match. Our last point here is humility is an act of faith. Charles Swindoll explains it this way. If we really believe that God cares for us, we really believe that God cares for us, then we never have to worry about serving our own interests. If God cares for us, we can afford to focus our attention on others. Because we are confident that God and God's abundance will meet our needs. Joseph exemplifies that. Another way to say it is that humility looks like a secure person with an honest, healthy assessment of themselves and their God. I want to end with three things that tell us what humility is not because the world has it very wrong when it comes to humility. The stories show us this. Humility is not gloomy or dismal or downcast. Humility is not fearful or timid. And humility is not passive. To recap, humility looks like seeking the well-being of others, pointing to God, starting at the bottom. Humility looks like a sermon that we preach with our whole lives. And last and possibly most important, humility is an act of faith. May God humbly work, may God work humility into each one of us. And may it permeate 
Riley Creek Church and the community around it. Let us pray. Gracious and everlasting God, we come before you thankful for this day and for the gift of life. We give you thanks and praise. We ask that you help us in this discipline of humility. It is not easy. We want to be exalted often and to be seen. But you show us another way. You show us the upside down kingdom. But we cannot do it alone. Thank you for the spirit of you, God, which is in each one of us producing fruits of the Spirit with things like gentleness and humility. We pray and ask that you continue to grow those fruits in our lives, in all we do, so that we may glorify you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week.